right, everybody, here's one that uh, I'm pretty excited about, even though I know it's probably not going to taste good. This is an elephant apple. Now, yeah, first let's just take a moment to appreciate how much personality this fruit has. And by the way, if you hear all these like horns and stuff, uh, I've said in the past, I, I'm, I'm in India right now, so it's kind of like inevitable that it's going to be loud. So um, yeah, apologize for that in advance, but yeah, stop, stop. It's not doing anything, dude. No, okay. People just like, like wail on their horns for no reason. I mean, I guess like to make people aware that they're there, but it's not to make someone go faster. There's no going faster, which is like really annoying when you're trying to sleep. Uh, okay, yeah, so as you can see, it is just like this knobbly mess. And um, what's interesting is you can like see how it's kind of like devised. They're like petals. I can't, I can kind of like sh show you, like these actually will separate if you give it like enough uh, force, you can actually rip these little petals apart. The petals kind of clump together into a solid mass, just like that. Um, and these are called elephant apples because elephants eat them. They're very popular with, uh, you know, megafauna. <laughs> you know, like, it's like one of those fruits that the, I, I believe that the seeds used to be dispersed by, you know, gigantic uh, animals. And there are wild elephants in India still, and they are responsible for dispersing the seeds of this fruit. I'm pretty sure. It's actually kind of an issue, um, because now the people here actually like these a lot. They use them in curries and stuff like that. So they're kind of like fighting over these with the elephants. So elephants that would normally be out in the wild eating these are getting into people's villages and stuff in order to hunt for fruit, because these are no longer so prevalent like in their uh, in their environment so like the government has actually made it illegal to pick these <clears throat> out in the wild. The problem with this thing now is that uh, I need to get into it somehow and all I have is this little knife so I'm gonna try to get into here very very carefully because it's very hard and from what I hear is that as you open it up it gets slimy inside making it kind of difficult to cut, so I don't want to accidentally like lop off a thumb. It has a quite a distinct smell to it that a lot of people don't like. It reminds me a lot of the garlic fruit, actually, which is a uh, Garcinia that I had in the past. Yeah, here we go. Come on, come on, you little jerk. Open. There we go. Okay. I got it. <laughs> uh, wow. Alright. Very strange appearance to it. You can see first, like, all those those petals in there. How they just kind of, like, yeah, they just come apart like that. That's pretty cool. The, uh, yeah. Interesting. And inside there are these little pulpy bits here. So here is a chunk of the fruit itself. This might be like a little bit unripe or something, because I thought that this would actually be like softer. You see that it's got slime to it. You can even see that slime kind of like trailing there. Mmm, lovely. Okay, I had to move the camera because I'm suddenly getting all washed out for some reason. Oh. Yeah, you know, sometimes, you know, you don't have the most ideal conditions while you're filming uh, out in other countries. So, doing my best here. Also, my bathroom apparently is possessed. Are you done? It feels like a ghost is, like, it's got a bad case of deli belly in there. People use this pulp that's on the inside to make stuff out of. They make, like, jams and things like that. It's used, I believe, in uh, different cooking applications. But it's kind of like, it's difficult to tell like where something begins and where it ends. So there's my little clump of fruit. You can see that those little seeds in there, oh, with a nice little slime trail on it. 
very tiny little seeds for such a large fruit. Okay, here goes. Look at that. That is um, quite unpleasant, but also unexpected. There's a lot of little flavors in there. The texture of that pulp is both crispy and slimy. Almost like a like unripe grape kind of texture and flavor. Not like super sour, but like the sourness of like a green apple. But it also has a little bit of funk to it. It's kind of like the funk that you get from the garlic fruit. People describe it as tasting like, kind of like sweet garlic. That does make sense. There's something savory about it. Like garlicky or oniony. Kind of like that. But not bad. You know, I actually like the garlic fruit. It reminds me a little bit like durian also. Like one of the funky bits that's in durian is in it. But at the same time, it's quite fruity. So it doesn't really feel like you're eating like something super challenging. It kind of does work. But at the same time, like, uh, I can't see myself just like chowing down on this with a spoon. Yeah, and as I recall, the garlic fruit also was slimy like this. So, yeah, oddly similar with the addition of like a really tart, unripe grape or a green apple. Now, people actually use these petally bits more than they use the pulp. These petally bits are pickled. It's okay. It tastes very much like the pulp on the inside, but it's a little bit stronger. But stronger, like, not like the unripe apple component being stronger. That's there, but a little bit less on that, a little bit more on the funky stuff. I can see that being really good if you cook with it, but eating it out of hand is, um... I, I guess, like, if I were pressed, like, I was really hungry, I would eat the, um, the bits on the inside out of hand. I would find a way if I was like starving, but like the petal bits on the outside would be harder for me to do. I've heard a lot of people saying that they don't like this thing. Uh, it's like, oh, it's gross, you know. But, um, and I can, I can totally understand. You know, it's the same reason why people say garlic fruit is gross, um, which I kind of like. I think I wouldn't like want to sit there and just like eat a bunch of it, but I can really see this being delicious if you cook with it. So I'm going to try to find, like, pickles or a curry or something made with this and put that in here next. Now. Oh, boy. So I got some of the pickles. <laughs> These are, uh, I guess the, is that Hindi? I, I don't know exactly. That The name for it is, in India, is Chalta. So Chalta pickles are what you want to look for. What's a little bit concerning is there's no liquid in there. Usually pickles have like a whole bunch of like oil or something. This is dry. There's just like air and pickles. Hmm. It smells okay though. It doesn't really smell like anything um, too crazy. It just smells like spices. I'm picking up a lot of cumin. Elephant, apple, sugar, soybean oil, mustard seeds, anise seed, chili, turmeric, salt, fenugreek, black cumin, there you go, coriander, cumin, acetic acid, citric acid, and sodium benzoate. Yum, yum. Okay, so let's, uh, yeah, uh, it's very, like, fibrous looking. So I'm guessing that this is made from probably both the, the probably, like, the whole thing, probably the vegetable parts like the petals on the outside and the fruit on the inside. Indian pickles are very intense. Like I like them, but you put like this much in like a big old thing of rice. So this might knock the glasses off my face. It actually reminds me a lot of tamarind candy, which I like. It's got like all those little flavors in there, like the sweetness, the tartness, the spiciness, like all that good stuff. Not really getting a whole lot of elephant apple flavor though. Like that funkiness that it has, that garlicky taste, not really getting that. This, I think it's just, uh, that flavor is overwhelmed by all the other spices. 
But what it does have that the elephant apple has is like that kind of like fibrous uh, texture. But it's a little stringier. It's like they cut it up into fine strips. So um, that's in there. But unfortunately, the flavor isn't. You know, so maybe it's just this brand or whatever. But not really getting much of that that garlicky, funky flavor to it. Kind of wish it did, because I kind of like that flavor. But it seems like the elephant apple in this particular case is more of just like a, a vehicle for those spices. So I think that's about it. I will see you next time. Bye-bye. At the end of this video, there's going to be a preview of next week's fruit, so you want to check that out. Uh, but before that happens, I want to give a very special shout out to Elizabeth Shaw for being a very generous contributor over on my Patreon page. If you want to find out more about how you can help my channel grow by using Patreon, there will be a link in the description below and also a little symbol around me somewhere as well. So uh, Elizabeth, thank you, thank you, thank you for your generosity, and thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.